You know, this video is made for the teacher who supports the move of bringing our students to become guided independent learners. It is also for learners who would like to claim the space and the responsibilities of a guided independent learner who sees oneself as an innovative researcher and co-creator of new knowledge contributing to the enhancement and transformation of higher education in our country. You know, there is that resolve to face our situation and make the most out of things. And this time of pandemic and beyond. Moving forward, guided independent learning for continuity enhancement and transformation of higher education in the Philippines, claiming the responsibilities of a guided independent learner. That's what we want for our students, for them to claim these responsibilities. Most of us know that the Philippines is ranked one of the top 10 in the World Risk Index of most disaster-prone countries in the world. So every year, our country experiences all forms of disasters such as typhoons, floods, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions with numerous emergencies due to armed conflict. So we suspend our classes uh, most of the time. This time, COVID-19 pandemic is different. It's still ongoing experience that it, it has overwhelmingly disrupted our way of life and is now challenging our educational institutions to go beyond our set ways of doing things. Its effects will still be felt for quite some time. And it will even change, redefine, and reconfigure how we teach, learn, and discover new knowledge. How we do our research, how we move our ideas, and how we engage our learners and teachers. Technology-mediated and technology-enhanced learning and teaching is what we're looking at right now. To go into flexible and remote learning and teaching. So this is now such an important thing for us. We're talking about exponential growth. Uh, the web as a single operating system, telepathic web or symbionic web. So web 5.0, this generation, we talk of it uh, being an intelligent web. And it has been growing so fast. And uh, in Industrial Revolution concept, it came out uh, in the Industrial Revolution 4.0, where artificial intelligence, robotics, nanotechnology, quantum computing, 3D printing, Internet of Things, and the list goes on. And into this generation of Industrial Revolution 5.0, well, we're talking about still looking into technology. And in the education environment, certainly we are looking at technology-mediated and technology-enhanced lifelong learning, even prior uh, COVID-19. So what, what were the qualities of this uh, environment? Well, diverse time and place, project-based, field experience, data interpretation, changing concepts of exams, Digital repositories talk about MOOCs and then OER, massive open online courses and open educational resources being shared. The culture of sharing has become so strong. And we talk of flexible, flipped, and blended learning, and student ownership, certainly, and lifelong learning in general. So this concept of technology mediated, technology enhanced learning and teaching was considered as a disruption to the traditional face-to-face -face learning and teaching. 
and now this same concept is, that we considered as disruption is now the same concept that we're looking at to have connectivity and uh, interactivity and ubiquity. So it's a technology-mediated and technology-enhanced learning and teaching concept that we are now looking at to have our continuity, our enhancement, and transformation of higher education now that we have this pandemic with us. So we are looking at the same things. But of course, people are really uh, resisting it still uh, because of um, many things. There's a long list of their objections like lack of equity, increase of digital divide, uh, low digital literacy, stop in uh, a drop in enrollment, lack of academic freedom, setting aside of Filipino cultural identity, transfer of students from private schools to public schools, closing down of some private schools due to lack of operating funds. And our parents are not financially prepared. Teachers are also are not prepared to do the shift. And higher education institutions are not prepared. So there's that lack of connectivity, changes in uh, research methodologies and no access to laboratories and difficulties in OJT. So we understand that, but we don't have uh, any more reason not to go this way. Why? Because of the lockdowns, the face-to-face -face learning and the teaching. It's all banned for how long? We don't know. So VUCA, this term came in 1973. And that was the time the economy was down and the whole world, the crumbling economy. VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And today, back to VUCA. The fear factor coming from the COVID-19 pandemic and also from the fact that we're going to use technology-mediated and te technology-enhanced learning and teaching, which is something new. So, but our university is very much resolved to move forward. We are now mapping where we are going, knowing our identity as a university, as a national university, and our university is supposed to lead into this. And for us, faculty and researchers, that's where we're going with all this and with the end in mind and a view that we are mindfully developing learners with the 21st century competencies, more so now at this time of pandemic. Our learners need to be creative, critical thinkers, problem solvers, based on empirical data, uh, innovative researchers, have good communication skills, respectful of cultures, possessed with deep love for our nation, and advocates of lifelong learning. So at this time, our academics are engaged in a reflexive mode and intently reviewing how we can develop uh, and look and review our curriculum design, course design, use and production uh, of content and resources, delivery modes and assessment, and the student and faculty support the technical and the administrative services that would support our faculty and our students. So realizing that though the focus is on the looking intently on the delivery mode, all other elements as are, you know, however affected and require adjustments. And the appreciation of the paradigm shift would depend upon the resources, administrators, uh, point of view and teachers and students and parents and all other stakeholders. There must be a result to do this. In our present situation, we're going through reimagining of the management of all these elements. So you have to come in with a review of uh, the curriculum and see the requirements per course, 
whether it's outcomes based and competency based and then you have to match this in the course design and the development of content use and production and also the uh, showing the course requirements and the activities uh, and also the schedule and the same is true for uh, when it comes to student support, there has to be a stronger student support and faculty support administratively. And you talk about the uh, delivery mode here. There can be uh, printed uh, uh, that can be picked up or put in USB. And then you can have some video recordings also in USB and online and offline. In terms of assessment, you may uh, require a portfolio uh, and uh, exercises and some activities and exams to be defined and uh, probably a lot of reflection and synthesis papers, research papers, project reports, and so on. Remote uh, learning and teaching for flexibility means being learner-centered. And that means really being concerned about the situation of the students. Some students with access, will have access to the internet with high uh, satisfactory connectivity and have available uh, devices and gadgets like computers, uh, desktops or laptops or tablets or mobile phones and high to satisfactory digital literacy may opt for uh, online learning and can really reach uh, LMS, the learning management systems of our university, and can be comfortable in using remote technology. However, there will be students with minimal to no access to the internet, with low uh, to poor connectivity, and have minimal to no available devices and gadgets, and probably occasionally uh, used to mobile phones and uh, also would have low digital literacy and therefore they would be more comfortable with uh, having uh, offline or non-digital technology. So it is important to use various means of digital and non-digital technology as delivery modes are uh, observed and therefore we do have to make sure that we have options for everyone and no one is left behind. So in terms of guidelines for quality assurance in all levels, first we always uh, hear outcomes-based and learner-centered writing for learner engagement. And we talk about our course guides being written for uh, our learners, our course materials, uh, course content must be produced with what is important is with independent learners in mind. That is most important. So this is what we're encouraging now. So we have a lot of self-assessment questions. Maybe just wrap around the wrap around chapters of books, e-books, textbooks, uh, written in modules, and so on. And requirements must encourage transparency, accountability and fairness as learners and faculty are co-creators of academic text and knowledge strengthening the higher levels, the higher levels of learning. So things will be research-based requirements. So you have research papers, synthesis papers, and reflection papers, project-based requirements, and a lot of reporting uh, documentation and asynchronous learning online, offline platform is the substance of inclusivity, accessibility, ubiquity, and flexibility of pace and time. So I would rather go asynchronous. Uh, synchronous learning, however, will probably happen and uh, hopefully it's a little optional. So for it to be used uh, to fa facilitate the learning, of course, but uh, it will be used by asking learners what they do not understand in the course materials and activities like that and collaboration, but not uh, to lecture anymore because that will be basically recorded. And uh, the course design, course guide, and course resources 
must help students become independent learners. So there has to be clear guidelines on what open educational resources are, also intellectual property rights or IPR, plagiarism, and it's important that uh, we update the students all the time on this. And also really make sure that the teaching component, there's a lot of reporting on what is happening. And the faculty is really do, doing a lot of work here. Uh, faculty is the course designer, facilitator for learning, and must be fully supported by UP administration. So the uh, aside from, of course, our students should have 100% support as well. And when we talk about uh, the faculty, the faculty will have to curate and produce course materials and resources, OERs, and identify experts in the field so that uh, they can match now with uh, the kind of content that they're coming out with. Learner-centered writing for the course guide and uh, a lot of self-assessment questions and activity-driven activities that are uh, turned into exercises and requirements for strengthening of the learner engagement because the learner has to be uh, engaged with the content and uh, the learner-learner interaction will be there and the learner-teacher interaction will be there and the learner-community interaction will be there as well. So moving forward, the coming up with a course pack. The course pack contains the following. Detailed course guide, learning resources, per study unit, study guide, per study unit, activity guides, and assignment guides. For the learners who are uh, watching and viewing now, uh, your faculty has designed your courses uh, by making use of resources online, connecting you with the experts through journal articles, written texts, learning objects, instructional videos, webinars, PowerPoint, with voice, documentaries, and images. Going synchronous uh, would also mean using uh, social media and uh, maybe design to use your LMS. Uh, for synchronous learning, though, uh, it is very clear when and where uh, you would be having the synchronous session. So it's good to record the event and engage in discussion. And for a synchronous uh, learning, you will be told where to access it, but it will be available anytime. Going asynchronous means uploading to the virtual platform, uh, the course resources, like having uh, a pre-recorded uh, slides with narration, video lectures, and the distribution of this would be uh, a file share, virtual classroom, uh, like LMS, in the case of UP Ouvle, or the Google Classroom, and uh, video sharing app, social media, OERs, and other online productions. And remember, it can be accessed anytime. And in line with connecting you to experts, we have a TVUP, which is the Internet Television Network of the University of the Philippines. It's meant to be shared to all, and there are hundreds and hundreds of uh, titles that uh, is quite ready for you. TVUP uh, is the Internet uh, Television Network of the University of the Philippine System. It is a resource center for sharing, featuring national scientists, national artists, scholars, researchers, documentaries, award-winning short films, and many more. Let's view this uh, video clip that will tell us something about TVUP.
IUP TV, popularly known as TV Op, is the internet television network of the University of the Philippines. Organized as a multimedia production, digital open educational resource repository, and publication system. Delivering well-researched and creatively produced academic content and works for information and educational purposes. TV Up On Demand and the Open Educational Resource OER Digital Repository Webcast Worldwide TV Up Daily Programming on the Web and TV Up Co-Productions in the Social Sciences, Arts and Culture and the Sciences The Platform Kalusugan ay karapatan. Financial sense. Musika. Documentaries. The Filipino. Maikling pelikula. Science Innovators Risk Reduction and Management Kultura Sining at Iba Pa Batas at Bayan Gender Talks UP Talks Usapang Pelikula UP Chronicles Noah Updates TV Up is a testament to the University of the Philippines character as the national university a teaching, research, public service and global regional university. Shared freely with all state universities and colleges, private higher education institutions, other training institutions, and the general public. At this point, I want to tell you something about paradigms of learning. So these are the educational theories of learning. It is a, a world view, and uh, there are many types, and uh, let's talk about them. So the first is behaviorism. It is a view in which behavior can be explained by external factors and behavioral conditions. And uh, according to this perspective, only the observable behavior should be considered. Cognition, emotions, and moods are uh, too far subjective. So, cognitivism is uh, the next one. And it is a learning theory developed by Jean Piaget in which a child develops cognition path pathways in understanding the physical responses to experiences. In this theory, students learn most effectively through reading text and le lecture instruction. And uh, the next one is constructivism. It is the idea that people are responsible in creating their own understanding of the world, linking new information to these experiences. In the process of linking new information to these experiences, people use these experiences and new information to construct their own meaning. The next is humanism. And here it emphasizes the value and agency of human beings, individually and co collectively. The meaning of the term humanism has 
uh, fluctuated according to the successive intellectual movements. And so uh, that's what you have in terms of uh, focusing on the individual as the subject and asserts that learning is a natural process. And the fifth, this is connectivism. It is relatively a new learning theory developed and based upon the idea that people process information by forming connections. This theory has developed with the digital and technology age, which goes quite well with the paradigm shift of learning and teaching, the remote modality that we are going into now, where you can get connected to the experts as course resources. So let's go back to the course pack. This course pack has a course structure. So you can either structure, if you are the faculty, you're the teacher, you can structure it uh, as modules uh, under each particular unit. Or you can or structure it uh, as uh, retaining just the topics and uh, going as weeks, then these would be the focus. The course structure is based on the syllabus, and syllabus is uh, your general guide to a course and what will be expected of the learner of you in the course. Generally, it will include course policies, rules and regulations required, uh, required text, and a schedule of assignments. Like in this case of Film 199, Research in Film, I start to introduce myself, and I welcome everybody to Film 199 Research in Film class. And it can be a short kamustahan or a longer type of welcoming our students. To be a guided independent learner means familiarizing yourself with each course that you take. Know the intended learning outcomes, the learning activities to link you to the course resources, and the course requirements and assessment. So what are the intended learning outcomes? Well, intended learning outcomes are uh, usually specific, measurable, and realistic, and learner-centered. Are, are we saying that the course objectives are the same as the learning outcomes? Yes. Yes, it is. But it's usually uh, written with active verbs at the start because it tells us what should learners know and be able to do after taking this particular course. For uh, film 199, so what are the intended learning outcomes? So these are the outcomes, and it starts with active verb, uh, identify, it's telling you as a learner, you have to identify and perform the procedures of writing a film research proposal. Describe the frameworks that can be used for conducting research in film and apply theories, concepts, and frameworks in writing a research proposal in film and perform the protocols of conducting research in film. So for this uh, particular uh, course, I turned it into uh, a modular course structure and put the units 1, 2, 3, and 4 as the objectives 
and so therefore they are the learning outcomes. And under that I have modules. One, two, three, up to eleven. And so uh, I turn them into modules. So one, two, eleven. And each one of these would be a learning outcome. It says there it has an active uh, uh, verb at the start. So you will know what to do. Understand your role as a guided independent learner and also the importance of research in today's digital times. So it, uh, it says here, module two, review short film genres. Three, critic examples of short films. Identify analysis parts of a thesis proposal because that's what you're supposed to do in this course to come up with your thesis proposal. And so it goes on up to module 11. So going back to this diagram to familiarize yourself with each course that you take, uh, you look now on the second element, which is learning activities. So what does learning activities mean? That means that how will learners learn? So this is the plan, the, the plan of the learning experience for you as a learner. So your teacher has designed this for you. Uh, the teacher has defined, uh, identified the experts and then what you're supposed to do with, uh, and it's given the activities and the, and it is matched for you to come out with learning on uh, the written text, textbooks, readers, journals, podcasts, video lectures, and, and so on. So in this part, what is important is that you read, you view all these uh, course materials that will help you understand uh, how to write a film research proposal. So let's look at this briefly. So you have in module three, critic of short films, and there are these resources that you have to go through before doing your uh, activities. Now, module six, as you can see. So design and treatment methods and procedures and visual references. And it goes on. Module 7 talks about planning. And then module 8, analysis of film theories. And uh, so on up to unit 4. And then it's already uh, guidelines of really writing out the whole paper and eventually presenting the uh, final uh, paper uh, first, of course, you have to do your final writing for this thesis proposal. So you have matching learning activities for the course uh, resources that are given you. Uh, in the learning activities, it tells you what to do. Attend introduction to the course class lecture. And activity two, after viewing uh, the webinar and so on, uh, do some reflection on it, and, and it gives you also other activities, and then it tells you to attend again another Zoom meeting, and you have activity five for viewing all the short films, and then a three-page paper containing the critique of the following, one narrative short film, one short documentary, etc. And this goes on the activities from uh, one to, I think it's going to be 14 activities all in all. So like this one is the activity nine, which gives you uh, details here. Then your activity 10 would be guidelines on open educational resources and intellectual property rights, IPR, and also a discussion on etiquette uh, and uh, plagiarism and the uh, Privacy Act. 
up to activity 14, which is already your submission of the final film thesis proposal. Then the last two aspects of the course, which would be the course requirements and assessment. So here you have uh, the, the would be course requirements and assessment, and then it answers the question: How will learn? How will learning be measured? Since we know that we are outcomes based. Uh, this will now be uh, put in a rubric and uh, if the requirements are research-based, project-based uh, requirements, then uh, the, your faculty has reconfigured that and will tell you how you are being assessed. The course requirements are really explained in the activities that were given you and even the schedules are here and uh, you will be assessed by uh, looking at the work that you have done. So summing up the course requirements you will be seeing it here as you can see uh, the percentage uh, of weight is given you as, as part of the assessment. So there you have it. That's the course pack. But, you know, as faculty, what, uh, as teachers, what we really want you to be, we want you to be a guided, independent learner. Always stay connected and always be engaged. Uh, what is important is for you to have this high self-motivation and uh, good time management. You have to seek collaboration and uh, yes, you have to become innovative researchers and connect with more experts and do the surfing. The search is important and because you have to bear in mind that you are co a co-creator of new knowledge. So the teachers and the learners become co-creators of new knowledge. So learn more from this crisis that we're having now. You have to be resilient. Let's be more resilient. And we have to push for that caring for others. That is very important. More important tips. What we want to tell you is that create that sense of rhythm and balance in your study habits during this COVID-19 times. What should you do? Well, get dressed in your normal uh, university clothes for your learning sessions. What else? Create in your home a workplace that is similar to your favorite study venue. Establish a routine and set the time of the day or night for your studies without distractions from friends, family, television, radio, and other gadgets. But be familiar with your gadget that you're using for your learning. So another thing, do not rush. Take a break, take a walk outside, exercise, relax to add energy and focus, and one thing, you should also use your alarm clocks, calendars, and create a matrix for all your courses to remind you of deadlines and due dates of your learning activities. So what is also important is collaboration and networking. This is good for project work. So stay in touch with your teachers, classmates, colleagues, experts, the field of study. So ask questions and search for answers. Eradicate that fear of being connected through technology. So take away that fear factor. Uh, COVID-19 pandemic, have take precautions, yes. Always be safe. 
but not to really fear it, and then you will freeze and do not fear technology-mediated education. Help out in taking away that volatile, uncertain, and complex and ambiguous situation. Be more in control of the technology-mediated and technology-enhanced learning and teaching. Yes, break that fear factor. What is important is you mount that fear and be able to now mold that, use that technology and use it proficiently. What is important is read the course guide, read and view the course content, participate in the learning activities, understand the parameters for assessment, and fulfill and submit course requirements. And here you will see that research and learning and teaching becomes one and that you now are co-creators of knowledge. Be familiar with technology mediated and technology enhanced learning and teaching. This is very important to become a guided independent learner for continuity, enhancement, and transformation of higher education in the Philippines. We will be breaking new grounds here. And uh, we see multimedia research. We go into e-research, e-methodologies, e-pedagogies, e-modalities. So you can see that all these concepts will come together and we'll be trying to solve the issues that were brought up earlier. That's why there is resistance, but I think we're really breaking new grounds here. So let's break new grounds here. Be a guided independent learner. Thank you, and always stay well.